Hello everyone, it's your boy Ash here once again, because today we have a little bit of a simpler video. I wanted to talk about the new Knuckles show that just came out in Paramount Plus. It's part of the Sonic quote-unquote cinematic universe, I guess. You know, it's spin-off of the Sonic movies that we've been getting. And people were really excited about it. Uh, Sonic Movie 2 was a surprise success in terms of like being a really cool, really fun movie. That also was a surprise success in like box office and stuff. And I felt like as a Sonic fan, someone who makes a lot of videos about Sonic, it was appropriate to make just a little bit of an opinion sort of like commentary video on it. Maybe the editing will be really light, especially because this is a pretty new TV show. It's really easy to get copyright flag for just using footage of it. And I've had trouble with Paramount specifically in the past, so I'm gonna try to avoid using footage, so we're probably just gonna see some images and stuff. Also, naturally, this video is gonna contain some spoilers. If you really wanna watch the show and care about spoilers, just go ahead and do it. It's not that much of a long show. We're gonna be discussing some of the episodes and my thoughts on it, because there's a lot to talk about, surprisingly, all things considered, for what it is. Since the show came out a day earlier in the US, and I'm not North American, I'm, I'm from Brazil, I wasn't actually able to watch it as everyone else was online for the most part. I wasn't really able to find a good website that had the episodes up really early on when I was able to check anyway. So it took me a few hours to actually get a hold of the episodes. But because of that, I was actually seeing some of the early reactions to it before I was able to watch it. Uh, so it's like through Twitter, people were already, you know, watching it and giving out their opinions. And there were a lot of folks just saying the show was kind of horrible. And that felt really weird, uh, cause people were saying it was like the worst Sonic media they've ever consumed and stuff. And I'm like, we live in a world where like we've had Sonic Underground, we've had Sonic Jam for the GameCom, we've had Sonic 06 even. We've had some of like really bad Sonic stuff, and this show like has a pretty decent production value. It's part of a so far fairly consistently decent to good movie series. So I was really confused as to how could it possibly be so terrible, especially since we had already seen some trailers and stuff and the, and the show looked pretty good, like at least passable. So I was really surprised and that, that made me really intrigued to finally watch it. So going into it, I was thinking, it can't be that bad, right? And honestly, it really wasn't. I, I don't know where people got the worst piece of phonic media I ever made idea from. Honestly, it's not that bad, <laughs> not really. Especially at first. The first two episodes, noticeably, were a pretty fun ride. It's not too Knuckles-centric. It focuses a lot on this Wade character that was mostly comic relief on the first two movies. And it's a fine little road trip comedy thing with Knuckles and stuff. I was having a pretty decently good time watching through it. It seemed like the show was made with a lot of passion. It had a few deep cut references like the presence of Pachakamak from Adventure and stuff. So, so far so good for, for this start. The story kind of didn't really focus on Knuckles, it was mostly about Wade going to this bowling tournament, but by that early point in the story, it still felt like it was decently balanced. Knuckles still had a lot of stuff to do, especially since we were dealing with those guys who were trying to capture Knuckles for his power, and that was mostly the focus for the first few episodes. So I was really having a good time. And since I was kind of busy this weekend, I didn't manage to watch the entire show through in like one sitting. I, I feel like most people ended up doing that, especially since it is a pretty short show. I watched it in a few chunks because I had a family visiting the, this weekend. So I would watch just a few episodes at a time. So I went out of like the first two or so episodes thinking, dang, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't that bad. I didn't really see the problem. But then when I got into episode three, I kind of noticed some of the issues like start to pop in. So episode three is where we meet Wade's family and like god damn it Wade's sister is insufferable. I understand she's supposed to be unlikable but like god damn it she's <laughs> she's so annoying <laughs> she's so bad it's not funny it's just kind of annoying uh, but everything else about the episode was sort of fine-ish. There was some questionably time Jewish representation, but I'm not gonna comment on that right now that I don't know how intentional that was and still Representation of minorities is still representation of minorities and it is a good thing. So uh, Pretty cool. Maybe I, I don't know Take what you will from that 
but I still had a pretty decent, fun time with episode 3 as well. And then came episode 4. And it might have been like the craziest thing I've experienced in my life. So, okay, so so far the show is pretty much lean more on comedy than uh, even like the Sonic movies before it. It's clearly more of like an unserious, funny kind of show. So yeah, it's really fucking unserious at times. Even before like that, there was points where like, oh god, what is this show? But personally, I saw those silly stuff and I was like going along with it. I enjoyed it as, you know, the show just being stupid and trying to be funny. This is a spin-off. It isn't really trying to be this huge epic or anything. It's just supposed to be like kind of funny and stuff. So I was going along with it, but episode 4 kind of takes it up a few notches. Because in this episode, we have this whole dream sequence where Wade is training mentally to like to become like a great warrior and stuff. And they do like this rock opera thing. And honestly, it's kind of fucking hilarious. <laughs> honestly, like, okay, I, I'm kind of conflicted on this episode as a whole because it kind of crosses a line. And if you take it in as, you know, like a Sonic thing, like th this, this is beyond what Sonic is supposed to be like, the shit really do be unserious. And especially considering how they treated some of the elements, like Iblis, I suppose, like flames up, it's, it's, it's Iblis. Iblis is in this episode from like Sonic 06. And apparently in this universe, Knuckles defeated him in the past, which would not make sense if this were the same Iblis from uh, 06. But then again, like, I, I don't see them adapting 06 itself anytime soon in the future. So I suppose that's their way of including this little nod, and I don't think it's gonna affect anything else going forward. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it still hits us really fucking odd, but I, I suppose this doesn't change much. It's a, I guess it's a cool reference, but still, like, using goddamn fucking Iblis, the creature that did this in Sonic 06, as this kind of prop for this j joke dream sequence stuff, it, I mean, just why? <laughs> but it, but it was really funny. I was laughing my ass off watching that episode. It was, it was pretty great. It was out there. I can understand how some people who would be watching this would be like, okay, like maybe this is a little bit too much. But as someone who was just kind of along for the ride and enjoying the jokes and stuff, I, I, I had a pretty decent time with it. I don't know how much of, I was laughing at it or with it. But I was still having a pretty decent time. And after that, I watched episodes 5 and 6, like, directly after 4. And it was there that I feel like the show kind of started to drag a bit. Episodes 5 and 6 kind of blend into my head a bit, because the setting is the same, and it's a lot of the same plot lines, and that's where it really starts focusing a lot more on the Wade bowling stuff, to, to kind of the show's detriment, I feel. Because, yeah, I was able to enjoy Wade and his family to some extent and still had a fun time with the show, even if it, by that point it was already not very Sonic-y. But when you're centering the whole climax around this, it, it, man, I don't know, when it slows down and you have to deal with Wade's abandonment issues, and I, I don't necessarily not empathize with it, I think it's alright, I guess. I mean, it's, it's a thing, it's a thing, it's a character arc, I don't exactly hate it. In concept, uh, I don't know if it wasn't necessarily the right place or if, if it was paced correctly. Like, who in the room had the idea to do it? I remember as I was watching, I think episode 5, maybe episode 6, I don't know, my cousin walked into the room and he grew up liking Sonic 2. He isn't really that much into it anymore, but he does enjoy the games and he thinks the characters are cool and stuff. So he asked me, okay, so what is the show about? What is going on? And I had to like explain, okay, so like it's, it's it's about Knuckles, but not really. It's about this dude playing bowling and his abandonment issues and Knuckles is just sort of there. And it was at that moment where like it really hit me like what really was wrong with this show. Because even though like he can be mildly enjoyable, that's just a fun little white guy comedy. <laughs> why? Just 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 why is it like this? Why not make a show that's more about Knuckles? Why do this whole as bowling plotline as the main focus. Why make this a Knuckles show at all if we're gonna do that? It, it, it just raises a lot of questions, like, what were they thinking? Because even though I don't necessarily, like, not enjoy it, I did have a decent time with it, it's just such a huge question mark. Out of all routes it could have taken, out of all ways it could have told a Knuckles story, why this? Artistic freedom? 
I guess. Do the writers really like Wade that much? That is necessarily that he has like an actual character arc for this whole TV show? Really? Are you really gonna tell me that? I, I don't know, it's just weird. It's just weird. It was after that realization that the show really started to taste sour for me, I guess. I was really not feeling it anymore. I was looking retrospectively at the moments I thought were kind of funny, and I was like, okay, but why? Out of all, uh, why? And looking back, I really don't know if I think this is a good show or not. I was sweeting, like, right before I watched, like, episode 5, I was sweeting, okay, I don't know, actually, the Knuckles show is pretty fun. The Knuckles show is pretty good, guys. You're, over you're exaggerating. And then after that, it was like, okay, but really, though. Because even though I was enjoying it, what's the fucking point? And I ended up finishing it feeling pretty empty, honestly. The show isn't very Sonic at all, nor it is very Knuckles for that matter. It, it just... It, it's, it's, a, it's a generic TV comedy for families, I, I suppose. And... This, the Wade stuff, I guess, was good. It was fairly engaging and enjoyable. But it really wasn't what I signed up for, and it really did not need to be there. And uh, I, I don't know, man. I could have lived without seeing that story. It's not... It's not essential, nor is it particularly outstanding. Uh, to me, it was just tolerable and a good, like, incentive for funny jokes and a few neato character moments, but not enough to really feel like this is a must watch in, like, any way at all. In a sense, I guess it's very similar to Sonic Movie 1, you know, since that was also not very Sonic and very much just a like, road trip white guy movie, too. But. This is like even more unserious, which can be a good thing since it is admittedly pretty funny sometimes. But it's kind of hard for it to find a niche for itself. Because movie one happened, the enjoyable thing about it was just that it was not like a train wreck. It was a pretty okay video game movie and that was already kind of an accomplishment. And just adapting Sonic at all and seeing him on the big screen and stuff and Eggman and Gene Carey as Eggman. Like, that kind of justified the movie as a thing. That movie also is kind of whatever, kind of okay, but we tolerated and we liked that it was getting a sequel that looked to be potentially more game-focused, and it, it was pretty much. It was a better adaptation of the games themselves. And Knuckles kind of feels like it goes back to, to sort of like movie one territory in a sense, because it's doing this generic story that happens to have Knuckles in it. And like that, it's, it's okay. I'd argue Knuckles is kind of funnier and it has a few more game references which is fun to spot, but it doesn't have the grandiose the impact of a huge high-budget movie about Sonic the Hedgehog, right? So it's kind of hard for it to like stand out in any way at all. It's a show I'm gonna forget about a few weeks from now, I'm pretty sure. And I think it's complicated because looking at it from a development standpoint, okay, so since this is a spin-off, I assume it can't be very important to the plot of the movies themselves. So I guess in a sense it is kind of filler. Not in the same way as like anime filler it's like that isn't canon. I suppose it is going to be canon to the movies. But I don't think it's going to matter. And I think the writers were put in a position where they were told, okay, so this cannot matter too much for the movies, right? Because if it's going to affect movie 3, then that's a whole big problem they have to deal with. Making sure everyone watched the Knuckles show. Not everyone's going to watch the Knuckles show. So I guess the story just had to be sort of inconsequential so it doesn't overtake uh, the movies as like this huge part of the story, right? So then what could they do? They leaned on comedy, I suppose, which kind of worked, but then also they made it about a random kind of whatever character from the movies, which also kind of worked. Emphasis on kind of, because in that way, they don't have to worry about like, oh, is, is Knuckles gonna be too different after this? Is Sonic gonna be too different after this? No, they just kind of like did their own thing. And it's kind of hard to make a story when you're limited by those boundaries of like, don't make it too important to the story. It, it can't be one of the movies, it's just a silly little side spin-off, you know? It can't be too much of a thing, and that probably impacted on the quality of the show as it came out as. So, ultimately, I just feel like it was kind of whatever. Honestly, I just don't ever feel like re-watching it ever. I was gonna re-watch it like that because we watched the movies together and I ended up watching the show by myself so I could make this video as soon as possible. So, I was kind of planning to re-watch it with him, but honestly, I'll pass. I don't want to watch this show again, I honestly don't really care. Ladies and gentlemen, and the prize for the most abrupt ending for a commentary video goes to... Thanks for watching. See you next time.